I just got back from hiking a section of the AT that included a, a beautiful stretch before and after uh, Hump Mountain, so right on the North Carolina-Tennessee border. And there were two of us that went, and we were both physics majors, so we noticed physics everywhere. I mean, physics is everywhere, but we noticed it a lot because we study it all the time. We can't not notice it. So this uh, video is a handful of snippets of things that we found to be physics-y while on the trail. Okay, so clearly there are a lot of mountains here. So this is the edge of one of them, which uh, brings up the great physics point of gravitational potential energy. If I go up this mountain, I'm doing work against gravity and storing some of the kinetic energy of me walking as potential energy in my change in height. And if I go down, I'm doing the opposite. I can walk more quickly because I'm using up some of my gravitational energy. Now, in uh, physics, we refer to this as the uh, gradient being, the potential gradient is in that direction. It's basically a vector that points towards the greatest increase in potential. And if you've got some object, uh, it's going to experience a force in the direction opposite the potential. So make this very physics-y. If we've got a giant lead sphere and we drop it on this hill, it's going to roll that way because it's opposite the gradient. However, uh, hikers are not lead spheres. So hikers don't like going up gradients or down gradients, and uh, we tend to go perpendicular to them, like this trail is right here. So that's what I'm going to do, because it's a lot easier. Now that we're up here, we got another interesting effect. The uh, water bottle, when I stopped to take a drink, is making noise. There's actually wind coming across and just like blowing over a small bottle, except with a lot of wind, even some huge like this will resonate. It's impossible to hear the sound of the bottle in that clip. It's almost impossible to hear me talking in that clip. So the, uh, the sound that it was making is you can actually generate just by hitting the bottle. And not the initial impact, but the reverberation after it. And uh, when you figure out one end of the bottle is open and one end of the bottle is closed, then the pressure at this end has to be zero and the pressure at this end can be whatever it wants which means that you can fit a quarter of a wavelength of sound in the bottle. And when you do all of that math uh, with the speed of sound uh, at the altitude where we were and uh, the length of the bottle, which it had a little bit of water in it, so I'm expecting is about uh, 20 centimeters, works out to about 412 hertz, which is roughly what we heard. So I would that's a totally believable estimate. So. Trek poles are really nice for climbing on rock and stuff, but when you hit the ground they have a tendency to vibrate, which is a really interesting problem uh, right from my differential equations class. It's actually a cantilever beam. This end is free to pivot, and the end that I'm holding is dampened by my hand, but it can kind of go anywhere. I think that by the time it's all said and done, it's all governed by Bessel functions. So if you're trying to make a, a solution of sugar water and you mix in so much sugar that it can't be dissolved, then it stops mixing properly. If you're trying to mix too much water into air and the conditions are just right, you get lots and lots of fog. <laughs> and Jacob's got a whole bunch of simple pendulums on his back. When he goes downhill, he tends to walk at their natural frequency. All the annoying water bottle swinging. So if you find yourself in a hammock wanting to go faster or slower, uh, physics again kind of has you covered. If you imagine yourself as a pendulum that's rotating about like some axis up here, the frequency of your rocking is going to be proportional to one over the square root of the distance between you and this axis up here. So. If you want your hammock to swing faster, just pull your ropes tighter. A swinging hammock is a pretty poor approximation of a simple pendulum for multiple reasons. But if you assume that I was about uh, 60 centimeters below the axis of rotation, which would basically be where the hammock was attached to the tree at both ends, and uh, you calculate that through, the, the period of my swinging, should, or the frequency of the swinging, should have been about 0.6 hertz. And I actually uh, sat there with a, a stopwatch and I timed, 
I got six swings in 10 seconds. So I'm at least within uh, one significant digit on that calculation there. So cars are pretty far from inertial reference frames, which uh, means that on these windy mountain roads, we get a lot of centrifugal force, as you can see. This is down. <laughs> And that's not even counting the fascinating optics of rainbows, the scattering and refraction that makes sunrises beautiful. Uh, even simple questions like what makes wet rocks slippery to hike on? Why do some objects feel colder than others? Uh, what makes leaves change color in the fall? Like in all of these pictures, or for that matter, why does anything even have color? And something I'm really disappointed we missed is how a, a specific asymmetry in a, a crystal at the like really tiny sub nanometer scale is actually what lets your camp stove light. It's what makes it generate a spark. So I might have to make another video sometime to include some more of these because there's just so much cool physics everywhere and way too little time to talk about it.